Welcome back. Okay, today we're going to talk about causality. So here's an interesting quote from Yuta Pearl from a very famous book. Um, this is about the word cause. Okay, the word cause is not in the vocabulary of standard probability theory. It's embarrassing yet inescapable fact that probability theory, the official mathematical languages of many, many empirical sciences, does not permit us to express that sentences such as mud does not cause rain. All we can say is the two events are mutually correlated or dependent, meaning if we find one, we'd expect to encounter the others. Scientists seeking causal explanations for complex phenomena or rationales for policy decisions must therefore supplement the language of probability of the vocabulary for causality, one in which the symbolic representation for mud does not cause rain is distinct from the symbolic representation of mud is independent of rain. Oddly, such distinctions have yet to be incorporated into standard scientific analysis. As we're going to talk about now, how to model causality. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to define something called an intervention on a variable, change its value by some mechanism outside of the model. I'm going to cause the switch to be up. I'm going to cause something else to be true. So a causal model is a directed model which predicts the effect of interventions. So what we're going to build is a model that, affects, that predicts how, what happens when we do things, when we act in the world. Okay. So what we're going to do is in this causal model, we're going to have random variables like before, and the parents of a node are going to be the direct causes of what makes it true or false. So there's not a single cause, but rather there could be lots of things that all together cause something to be true or not, or cause something to have variable to have some value. Okay. We expect that the causal model to obey the independence of assumption of a belief network. So if we knew everything that came before, and we so if we knew the direct causes then nothing else that comes before is, is relevant. So the only way to affect the, the variable we're interested in is to affect one of the direct causes. If we knew the direct causes, everything else is irrelevant. And that's exactly the, um, the assumption that we made in a belief network. Okay, so it expected a causal model to obey the independence of a belief network. So all causal networks are belief networks because all that a belief network is is a network that incorporates this particularly conditional independence assumption. However, not all belief networks are causal networks because we don't necessarily have to order them, the variables, such that you have the, the parents of direct causes. Okay, so here's an example of doing this. So here's an arguably a causal network. Okay, so we have the sprinkler on depends, whether the sprinkler is on depends on the season, whether it's rains depends on the season, whether the grass is wet, depends on the on the whether it rained and whether the sprinkler was on. If the grass is shiny, then the grass is wet, and if the shoes are wet, the grass is wet. So it's really just a belief network now. But I'm gonna uh, let's look at how viewing it as a causal network. So think about observing the sprinkler was on. If we observe the sprinkler on, well then we get more information. So there's information now about the season and the rains and the grass is wet and the grass is shiny and the shoes is wet. However, if we were to turn the sprinkler on, we don't change the season, right? We can't change the season by turning the sprinkler on. Well, turning the sprinkler on tells us about the season, right? So observing sprinkler on tells us, gives us information about what the season is. However, turning sprinkler on does not. Turning sprinkler on does not affect whether it rained. It does affect whether the grass is wet, the grass is shiny, and the shoes are wet. Okay, so if you think about which probabilities change if we observe sprinkler on, and think about which probabilities change if we turn the sprinkler on. And they're different things. We're going to model, be able to model both of these together. Okay, so this is a famous example is that ice cream consumption and drowning are correlated. So you find out that if you look at the statistics across, across different places, that there's a strong correlation between ice cream consumption and drowning. Um, and you might wonder why that is. And so here's some models. So one of which is that drowning causes ice cream consumption, which is pretty implausible. Um, ice cream consumption causes drowning. Um, maybe that's true. Maybe they they do it for some other way. Um, by the way, these two at the top cannot be distinguished by observing the world. You cannot tell which is which by observing the world. So observations are not enough. We could say, well, maybe it's because of the weather. If it's hot, there's more drowning. If it's hot, there's more ice cream consumption. Arguably, this is a good causal model of the, how the world works. Um, here's another causal model that ice cream consumption 
causes beer drinking, which causes drowning. We know that drinking alcohol is a strong, is a, has a strong causal effect in drowning. And maybe ice cream consumption increases beer drinking. Turns out we can actually test these bottom two. You cannot test the top two. We can test the bottom two by looking at the independence assumptions and seeing whether it's doing it. Okay. Um, we could test this one by actually banning beer drinking and seeing whether it changes it. Um, we could test some of these by actually trying to you know, ban ice cream and see if drowning is affected. Okay, so, um, so in this one here, if we banned ice cream consumption, well, then drowning is not affected. But this one here it is, and this one here it's not. This one here says if we really put lots of guards out to stop drowning, we can, we can decrease ice cream consumption. Okay, and this one here says, you know, if we decrease drowning, we're not going to change ice cream consumption. Okay, and this one here, we can actually look at how much beer, whether beer drinking you know, is correlated with each of them and actually is enough, has enough information to pass this through. So there's sort of interesting things we can do with causality here. So what we're going to do is argue is in a causal model, intervening on a variable only affects its descendants. We're only going to go downhill. We're not going to do this backward phase that we did when we did, when we did reasoning in a belief network. Okay, and we can define probability of y given do of x is the probability of y given we intervene on x. So in particular, the probability of shoes wet given you do sprinkler is on, given you turn the sprinkler is on, is different to shoes than the probability of shoes are wet given that you've observed the sprinkler is on. All right, so there's a difference. So the probability of shoes wet when you turn, turn the sprinkler on is different when you observe the sprinkler on. So now let's look at how do, do x is going to be modeled. So do x, is modeled by having an extra parent which says we're going to force x to be true or not, force x to have some particular value. The domain of force of x is the domain of x together with this do not force, no force. So in if force of x is this no force, the variable x gets its value from the other parents, otherwise x takes the value from force x. Okay, so an intervention has a different effect than an observation. We'll see that doing it this way has a different effect. Um, an observation, an intervention only affects the descendants. Um, there's a typo there. Oh well. Um, so let's let's try this. Let's copy this. Let's copy this link, and we'll go to the the network here. So here's this network here. So this is the network here. We can um, we can put it in solve, or we can toggle monitoring and see what happens. Okay, um, here, if we observe the sprinkler is wet, if we, if we make an observation that this is true, right, then it's very likely that some are according to this model. Okay, therefore it's very unlikely it rained. Um, so, well, it did probably didn't rain, but the grass is, you know, probably wet because the sprinkler was on and the grass is shy and the shoes are wet. Okay, so now we're going to try and model the fact of not only observing it, being able to, to force it to be true. So let's go back to create mode here. What we're going to do is we're going to create a node and we're going to call it force sprinkler. Force, force sprinkler. force sprinkler, and the domain is we're going to force it to be true, we're going to force it to be false, or we're going to do no force. We're not going to force it anyway. Okay. We'll put it there, and then we're going to make that as a parent of sprinkler. So we're going to modify this probability table of sprinkler. Okay. And now we're going to say if you force it to be true, the probability is true is 1. If you force it to be false, it's going to be false. Okay, if you know force, it's exactly what it was before. If you force it to be true, it's going to be 1. If you force it to be false, the probability that it's going to be on is, is 0. Okay, so it's saying we're not going to force it all as well. Okay, and now let's suppose that we're going to um, I'll, um, modify the probability table of this and suppose we're going to force it to be true, 0. Point one and um, 0 
0001. Okay, now let's look at what happens here. Now we're going to create this to solve mode. Whoops. And now let's undo this observation. And we're going to toggle monitoring for sprinkler. Let's put it over there so we can see what's going on. And basically we're not forcing it here and exactly the same behavior as before. Um, if I make an observation here of sprinkler, to be true, it's most likely summer and the grass is not wet. Okay, now this is now true. So winter got changed. So let's make this observation. We'll go and make it none. Then what we're going to do is we're going to now force sprinkler to be true. So we're going to make an observation that this was true. And I want you to look at both season and sprinkler and rain. So look at all those three. And I'm going to force it now to be true. And what happens is winter season of those did not change, but sprinkler is now one. But we now have a very different effect. Right, we forced this, we turned the sprinkler on. It's still most likely that it, you know, it didn't change the fact that it rained. It's more likely that the grass is wet. If I force the sprinkler to be false, I end up with, you know, the sprinkler is now, you know, not on. Here's the same distribution of rain. And now we have grass is wet and grass is shiny. And if I force it to be none, then it's the same, exactly the same model as we had before. Um, Notice with very low probabilities, that's sort of a different model here than it was when we didn't observe four sprinklers. So typically we want to observe the fact that we haven't forced it in order to get the same model as before. Okay. So let's now look at what is a reasonable causal model. So here's a good clicker question I'm going to ask you um, to think about this. A switch is connected to a fan, so they're both correl strongly correlated. You know, what do these actually say? You know, which is the more likely causal model? Does changing the switch position cause the fan to be on? Does causing the fan to be on cause the switch to be up? Um, by the way, you cannot distinguish these by observing the world. Okay, here's another classic model. What's a reasonable causal model? If someone takes marijuana, causes them to take hard drugs, does taking hard drugs cause to be marijuana, take marijuana? So if we increase, so if we, so this is the gateway hypothesis that get, that marijuana is a gateway drug to taking hard drugs. Or maybe it's the other way around. You know, is both true or is neither a good reasonable causal model of this world? You, you cannot distinguish these by observations, but you can dis distinguish by interventions in controlled studies. We're having no controlled study now. Legalizing marijuana is actually changing whether people take marijuana. It's interesting to see. I do not know the statistics about how it goes to taking hard drugs. So here's a, an applet to play with. So let's load this, copy this, go back to this network, load from URL, and we'll load from URL, we'll cut, paste that in. And here is my model. Let's toggle monitoring. Okay. And now let's see what's going on. Let's force, um, we don't force as well is here. Okay, so let's make an observation. If we observe they take marijuana in this model, so if we observe to be true, now notice the probability of takes hard drug is 0.05. It goes way up to 0.15. Okay, so if you take marijuana, it increases your probability of hard drugs. If you force people not to take marijuana, it reduces the probability of hard drugs. Okay, let's make it back to none. Let's see the other way around. In this model, if you observe they take hard drugs, Watch what happens with marijuana. It's much more likely that they've taken marijuana. Okay, and if you observe they don't, then it becomes very unlikely they have taken marijuana. Okay, none here. So now what happens, I want you to think about, is what happens if I force people to take marijuana? So think about what should happen. So pause now and think about what should happen here. What should happen if I force them to take Marijuana. So the probability of marijuana is going to go up. What should happen to take hard drugs? And if you look at this model, whoops, I did don't force. If you force it to be true, look what happens to take hard drugs. It goes down. Why is that? What's going on here? What's the problem? Because is this how the world works? If you force people to take, if you 
force people to take marijuana as opposed to observing them, is it possible that the probability of hard drugs goes down because it didn't now network? So think about what's going on here. What's happening here? You can play with this yourself. Okay, let's stop now. We'll talk about this in class.